Hi, my name is Dr. Evan Dunn. I'm a retina specialist located in Tampa, Florida and the co-founder of I Know More. Are you potentially getting an eye injection such as Ilea, Avacin, or Lucentis? People commonly want to know, do they hurt? And fortunately, the answer for most people is no. Continue watching this video if you want to learn exactly what to expect from the procedure itself, of course with no graphic photos, as well as to what to expect immediately after and even several days after the treatment. We will begin this video with a brief introduction into the anatomy of the eye. Here we can see an external photo of the patient's eye. The clear part here is the cornea. The white part is called the sclera and there's a skin that's overlying the sclera that's called the conjunctiva. Looking at the eye in cross-section, here we have the cornea. The blue part here is the iris. Behind the iris sits the lens. And then behind the lens sits the vitreous cavity, which is here in gray. And that's where the medication actually gets injected into. The retina lines the back wall of the eye. And that's the primary target for where the medication actually acts. So the intravitreal injection the intravitreal injection procedure usually starts with a technician numbing the eye several times with a combination of eye drops as well as uh, viscous drops as well which contain anesthetic. Next, the doctor usually will come in and either do a injection of lidocaine-like medication on the white of the eye or will simply use the topical medication that the technicians use to provide adequate anesthesia. Either one is totally adequate for most patients. Next, the patient usually will have a drop of betadine, which is an antiseptic solution placed in the eye. Many retina specialists will utilize an eyelid speculum to help maintain the eye in an open position and to prevent blinking during the procedure. This is not painful. The patient will then be asked to look away from the needle in a specific direction and many doctors will very gently kind of press on the white of the eye to mark where they're going to actually do the injection. Next, with the patient maintaining their gaze in the desired area, the injection is actually done just like you can see here on the right hand side and with adequate anesthesia there really should be no pain. Patients may complain of a little bit of pressure, but there really shouldn't be pain. If there is pain, it's very, very important to make sure that you don't move the eye or jump. And, of course, to tell the doctor and technician that you had discomfort so that the next time they can give you some additional anesthetic. But really, most patients say it really doesn't hurt if you give adequate anesthesia. So, what can you expect after the injection? Well, immediately after, Many patients will have some floaters and that usually is air within the actual medication itself and it goes away after about a day. People perceive these floaters as small black spots at the bottom of their visual field. Avast in particular may have some silicone oil within the syringe and that silicone oil can actually uh, get into the vitreous cavity. Those patients may complain of some floaters for several weeks but they almost always go completely away. Most patients will complain of some irritation the day of the procedure, and that's due to the betadine. Betadine is a mandatory part of the procedure because without it, the risk of infection is simply too high. It's very irritating to the cornea and to the surface of the eye, and so patients will often complain that they feel like they have an eyelash or like a piece of sand in the eye. And the best way to deal with this is just to use preservative-free artificial tears really every one hour as needed for discomfort. Of course, your retina specialist will further guide you on how to deal with this particular problem. It's very common to have redness. The reason why is because there's very, very small blood vessels around the eye that the retina specialist can't see, and sometimes the needle can kind of lacerate one of those and cause a little bit of bleeding between the sclera, the white part of the eye, and the conjunctiva, which is kind of the skin that's overlying the sclera. The redness does not cause any damage. It's called a subconjunctival hemorrhage and tends to last between 10 and 14 days. Nothing in particular has to be done about it. It is normal 
to have a little bit of pressure sensation, but again, if you have a sharp pain, definitely make sure that you tell your doctor. It's normal for the vision to be a little bit blurry immediately after. It tends to be better by the next day. Now, if everything is like black, like the lights went out in the room, that's not normal, and that can mean that the pressure in the eye is too high following the procedure, and that's something that the retina specialist needs to know about immediately. So, minimizing discomfort. It's very, very important that the technicians do an excellent job washing all the betadine out of the eye. If they don't, what you'll notice is a persistent burning sensation, and that's a reason why you need to call the technician back and say, hey, I need to be rinsed out again. Otherwise, the burning sensation will persist. If you have difficulty opening the eye, and the eye is you know, tearing excessively and really causing a lot of discomfort, that's a sign that there's probably a small scratch on the eye related to the utilization of betadine. That's a reason to call the retina specialist because they may potentially want to prescribe you um, some additional antibiotic ointment. Recognizing signs of infection. The greatest risk of having this procedure is the risk of infection, which is approximately 1 in 3,000. The signs of infection include significant pain. Usually the patient feels fine, and then all of a sudden the eye really, really starts to hurt. So pain that's getting worse, not better. In addition, terrible sensitivity to light, where it's hard to even keep the other eye open because the light is so bothersome and then redness around the entire eye. If this is going to happen, it usually happens three to five days after the injection. So post-injection activity, definitely avoid rubbing the eye because that can both scratch the eye as well as introduce bacteria. I usually tell patients to wait at least five to seven days before utilizing contact lenses. Medicated eye drops like those used for glaucoma are fine to begin using after the intravitreal injection. Lubricating eye drops are also fine to use. I recommend avoiding getting water in the eye for at least five to seven days as it's an unnecessary risk of infection. Eye protection is certainly warranted, especially in those patients who want to do things like gardening or other kind of activities where particulate matter may potentially enter the eye. So in conclusion, most patients are able to get this treatment done without having any discomfort it's considered to be a very safe treatment. I hope that this video helps you feel more comfortable about the idea of getting this. This, of course, does not constitute any medical device and is only for informational purposes. Please leave any comments below about additional information that you might want to know on this topic.